Today we're making Victorian Christmas decor. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome! The first project is a Victorian wreath. We're going to start off with one of these vine, grapevine wreaths. This is about 17 or 18 by 14, so it's oval. Then I have some of these beautiful poinsettia picks from Dollar Tree, two different kinds in three bunches. And I have two of these tubes of ornaments in two different sizes, and we have like a rose gold and a gold. These are a set of bills that I got from the thrift store. Then we have some glitter paint, some rose gold paint, and a sponge brush, a variety of old ribbons and new, whatever you have on hand. We're going to start by clipping off all of our flowers. Leave enough stem there that we can attach these down into the wreath. Now let me show you how you can make these pitiful looking flowers much more substantial. We're going to put two together. So we're going to pull one off and this is me trying to discover how to get the centerpiece off. It's just easiest to cut it and then the little seed part just pops right out. And then we have four leaves here. I'm gonna take the stem from another flower, feed it right through, put the stem back on, and look at that. So we're gonna do the same thing with these, but these have like a little snap sort of situation going on, and it just pops off, but it stays on very securely. So I'm gonna take the bees off of this one. Now we just have the two layers of petals. I'm gonna take one more of these apart, pull the back off, leave the berries in that one, or the center, and then just push those other petals up there. Snap that little back part back on. If I was looking at what I was doing with my glasses, I could have got that first try. Put the stem back on and look at the difference. Isn't that amazing? All right, so I knew that I wanted these bells to be a rose gold color. However, I wasn't exactly sure how the paint would do on this plastic because these are just plastic bells. So I start off with a brush putting the paint on and it just barely makes any coverage. I just I go ahead though and do all three of them but then I go back in with one of these brushes and I'm just kind of pouncing in it and just offloading and just dotting it all over the bells. And y'all the texture that this makes is beautiful. It looks like old bells are old and, and rusted and aged. It looks perfect for the Victorian style, so I really hope that you try this. Now I've got some fern picks from Dollar Tree, and these are in gold, and then I'm not sure where these came from because I thrifted these, and they're just uh, some type of a pine, I guess, since they have pine cones. We're gonna take the fern picks apart, just cut them down where we have enough stem to work with, and leave these greenery pieces whole. Now for my wreath, I'm gonna start on the bottom and just push this into the grapevine wreath, you know, the stem part of it. And then for a change, rather than using floral wire here, I'm gonna use some zip ties to show you that you can do things many different ways and it's just not wrong. Just however you can get these on here, you can put them on here. If you don't have a zip tie, if you don't have floral wire, you can always hot glue them, although I'm not sure how long it would last that way um, or you could use pipe cleaners you know whatever you want to use here you could use some jute cord whatever you have it's no excuse to stop once we've gotten started right right so we're gonna move along with the other two picks and these are kind of gonna go upward I'm gonna start with the higher one and it's going to kind of go toward the top center as you can see here it's gonna wrap around this way and it is not going in the same direction as the bottom piece. I'm going to secure it down with a zip tie. And then I'm going to grab another one, put a little bend in its stem too, and just put it right underneath the one we just put in. It's going to leave a little gap in the middle for us to add a bow at a later time. Very easy. Zip tie, snug it down on there, and any pieces that need a little securing, go ahead and do that. Then I'm gonna start adding this beautiful gold fern. I chose the greenery that I'm using here because it has sort of a bluish gray tint, and I thought it would give a really pretty 
contrast with all of the warm from the gold and it I think it will look nice with the pink too that cool color and the pink is actually I guess it's more of a mauve type color I'm not really sure you could maybe call it rose gold I mean what do you think you'll see when you get a closer look at those ornaments you tell me what color you think it is because I'm really not sure what to call it so I'm gonna move these pieces around in the greenery, just some sticking out, some on top, just kind of thread them around through each other and fluff them where they need to be fluffed. Just spread it out a little bit so it looks like it belongs there. And I'm gonna continue around with this. And I decided that one more piece right here would be pretty. Just a kind of little flyaway, a little extra up there. And this is how it looks so far once we've got our greenery on, our greenery and goldery. And now these now lush poinsettias that we put together, we can start adding these. If you don't have poinsettias from the Dollar Tree, that's fine. You can get them on at Hobby Lobby right now, I think for 60% off. They're, it's very economical. And I've heard that Walmart has some beautiful greenery picks um, out this year too, so you might wanna check that out. We always wanna keep it budget friendly on this channel, right? That's how we do it here. We wanna do different things and we wanna keep it budget friendly. So I'm continuing around with the two different types of poinsettias looking good so far you can watch my videos on mondays and thursdays at 5 central standard time and it is free now i'm going to move on to these beautiful ribbons that i found these i got from the thrift store they have staples in them that's really weird so be careful with that we're going to make a bow i'm going to use my own little bow maker tool here didn't copy anybody i'm very appreciative of the original creator of this um, mine is not exactly the same so i'm not putting anybody out of their, their royalties or anything. Just making something that I can afford, right? And you know how to make a bow. You've seen me do this bow before. This is not a difficult bow. And the fabric in these bows, well, in this ribbon is wonderful. It's old, but the texture is so different than anything I've felt before. It's like a, it's a stiffer, papery, yet still fabric type, I don't know. And this is like a, a velvety feeling ribbon and it's got the glittery polka dots on it, so pretty. We're gonna do two loops on each side and they are going to be six inch loops with 18 inch tails. So you saw me first put the 18 inch tail out there and then make two sets of loops like this. Then I'm gonna pull that other tail down, make sure we get them about the same length, doesn't have to be perfect, snip it off. Okay, now leaving that bow on the bow maker, I am going to go ahead and add on my next ribbon. This one is a stunner. This ribbon is absolutely beautiful. It has poinsettias on it. It is silver and gold. And it's also that really interesting feel. It's almost, I don't know, is taffeta the right word for it? I don't know, it's really different. It is wired, both of these are wired ribbon. So it's the same process as we did with the bow underneath. You see me just kind of fold it in half. That's how I always do my bows so that the bulky part goes in the middle. Squeeze my wire pieces together and then feed it down there and then cut it off. Now I'm just gonna take a piece of cotton twine and you can certainly use whatever you have here for this because it won't show in the end. So go ahead and use a pipe cleaner or a zip tie, whatever you're more comfortable with, because we will be covering up the center. And then add a couple of knots, snip it off, get all that excess out of the way, and then you can start looking at your bow and fluffing it out. I love the combination of these two bows together. Now the bow on the bottom has the six inch loops. The bow on the top, I don't think I said, it has five inch loops. So it's a little bit smaller, the one in the front, but the tails are about the same length. You see how this material just stands up so, I don't know, it's wonderful. I wish that we could find Dollar Tree ribbons of this quality. So pretty. 
We're going to dovetail the ends or you can cut them at a slant, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm trying to put a really steep cut there just to make it a little different. I'm going to take a thin piece of floral wire, go through my little center here where we tied it. You could always do this before you tie the center up, but I almost always forget. So this is an easy way to kind of make it look like you did it on purpose. I meant to do that. So put it down in the center of where those greenery pieces meet. And I'm just going to take the wire around the back and twist it and fold it tightly and tuck it into the wreath so it doesn't poke any fingers. This is how we're looking so far. Really like it. So now here are those ornaments and there's that pinkish color I was talking about. I'm going to add some hot glue to hold these little tops on because they pretty much snap on but when you are using when you're bundling these together and putting pressure on them they have a tendency to pop off and I don't want that to happen once I've gotten all that work done so I'm just going to go ahead and do it now get it over with and I'll do every one of the bundles and we're going to do three bundles this is easy you just feed them through the wire I'm just going to do two golds and a pink and then two pinks and a gold just to kind of alternate them so one big two small in each little bundle twist them together see this would be the part where they would pop off of those little hanger sections if you didn't have them glued on i'm going to trim this off and then twist down to sort of make um like a little more of an area that you can attach it down to the wreath a little something else to add some glue to just twisting it, folding it up, twisting it again. So it almost has like a little stem, which you could feed through the wreath if you chose to do it that way. But they'll be nice and tight in there. Then you're going to add some hot glue to your wire, to the ornaments, wherever it needs to be added so that it stays in the very center of your bow. And to me, y'all, that is pretty. Those colors are so gorgeous together, don't you think? I think that the pastels and the wine colors, they're all colors that look really good in a Victorian style um, home or decor. And I'm just gonna add three sets. So one on the top, one in the bow, and then one is going to be in the bottom. Just trying to get an idea of where I'm at. Once the bell has dried, I'm going to take this beautiful um, older looking gold it's like a brushed gold I think is what it's called a tiny little foam brush and I'm gonna go all over the clapper or that little round part of the bell and the bottom of the bell you can see me patting that on I'm trying to do this all the way up to the edge of where the pink starts or the rose gold starts and I'm gonna go up and down all the way over until every bit of that bright shiny silver that was on there is covered up. And you just have to be patient with this because it does take two coats to cover it, um, you know, to be thick enough to really cover it. So this is what it looks like with one. Right there. And then you'll do each one of those, let them dry and do one more coat. And then I'm going to choose my placement where I want these bells to be on this wreath. Initially, I thought I would hang them right down in the middle, but for balance sake, I think it looks better off to the side. So this is where I've decided to place it. To give it a little more support and something to attach the bells a little more securely to the wreath, I'm just using a piece of a popsicle stick that I broke off or a craft stiff stick. <laughs> and I am going to give it like a little base there that'll be where we put our glue right through the top there's a couple of holes so i'm taking another piece of that wire the floral wire feeding it through there and that's how i'm going to attach the top part of it to the wreath you can feed it through the wreath into the back or really the easiest most non-frustrating way to do it is just to wrap it all the way around twist it up and it's so thin you're not going to be able to see it adding hot glue on that craft stick back there and pressing it down and then underneath the base if there's any areas that you can see you're touching you can go ahead and put it there too I'm gonna add another piece of fern just to cover up my little top there and this is what we have I've done a lot 
of research on vintage and Victorian. And this is my idea. This is my representation of what a Victorian wreath would look like. Do you like it? If you do, a thumbs up would be much appreciated and it will let me know that I am on the right track. It is Subscriber Appreciation Month all November and I want to say thank you by giving back. So I want you to pause this, take a screenshot, read the rules, do what you got to do, and good luck. The next is in our angelic choir. So I've got two of these little trees. I've got some more of that shimmer glitter spray, some vintage little angels, and they're having instruments. Look, one of them's playing the bass. They're from Hong Kong. And then we have a flute and a clarinet, I believe. This is a spoon rest. Wherever Room Essentials comes from, that's where this came from, but I thrifted it. Automotive cloth from Dollar Tree. We're gonna take the Heirloom White Satin Spray Paint and spray paint this. After it is dry with one coat, you're gonna do each side. You're gonna take the handle and spray it with your shimmer spray, or you can use a shimmer glue, or you can use Mod Podge and glitter, or whatever you wanna do. I'm gonna make a platform for the top of this. This is gonna be like a stage for our angel choir. I'm gonna cut out outside of the line just a little bit because I want there to be a lip and you'll see why shortly. Nice and smooth. And it is going to fit perfectly on top of my spoon rest. Using my glue gun, I'm going to add some glue all around the edges. This is hot glue, so you gotta work kind of quickly and be careful with your fingers. I'm gonna place it on top, quickly fold, turn it over, and then just kind of slide it into place. Press it down and let it cool. Then we're gonna have to cover our stage. So I'm just using a pen and I'm going outside, putting some little guide dots on this automotive cloth so that I have enough to overlap onto the stage part and onto the bottom part. Make it nice and neat. This is not the easiest stuff to cut and I have sharp scissors, so just be patient. Protect your fingers. We should all have these finger protectors by now. Then I'm going to add glue on my cardboard section and just squish up the sides. You gotta keep it laying flat so that it doesn't slide around and just do this all the way over. It's gonna completely cover the little platform and it's going to overlap onto the bottom of the spoon rest all the way around and you're gonna push upward and close your little gap there hopefully you won't have any little black marks showing in the end you can't see them but just be careful with that here are our beautiful little angels i want to show you the difference see i had two of the same ones one of them was broken so i experimented on her she's missing her little bow and i really like the way it looks covered if you don't want to do this and you like the aged patina, by all means, leave it exactly like that. But for me, I wanted this to be a little more, mm, a little more gilded. I guess that's, that's, that's the word I'm going to go with. We're going to gild them. That's what we're doing. So I'm going to do each one of these like this, and I'm just kind of offloading the paint and just tapping that all over. I don't want a bunch of gloppy paint settling down in all of the cracks. I just want it to be pretty and shimmery and rich. It makes a big difference. So whatever's left on the brush, I'm just gonna go over the handle of the spoon rest. Now we're gonna start putting our stage together. We'll start by adding the trees making sure that when I put the trees down on here that I'm not taking up too much space and that our angels still have room to be there. You're probably not, well, you're most likely not gonna have this exact same spoon rest, but you could do this with a Dollar Tree spoon rest probably. I don't know if they have a lip around the edge or not, but it might work. And you could certainly do this with the top of a teacup. That would be really gorgeous, but I didn't have one, so this is what we're using. But it almost looks like a stage, right? Like they would walk up the stage and take their places. Once those angels are dry, we're gonna start putting those down on the stage. I'm gonna hold it for a minute and press down a little bit so that the glue goes through that fabric onto the cardboard and really locks it into place. 
I don't want anything flopping around. So, so far, this is how it looks. So pretty. Now we're going to embellish the stage. So I've got some of this old ribbon or trim. I don't know if you, which way, what, what would you call this? Trim, ribbon? I've always referred to it as ribbon, but we're gonna trim out the stage with it. So there you go. It's very luxe looking to me with that old gold and the gold in that ribbon or trim is about the same color that is in our angels. So it's perfect. And it looks rich and it looks regal and it looks Victorian to me. I'm gonna add this all the way around my edge. It doesn't take a lot of glue because the fabrics cling to each other quite well. Just gonna pat it down until we're all the way around back to the handle of the spoon rest. You can cut that off. And in the shape or the design of this ribbon, it's got little, if you don't cut it in a certain way, it will have little pieces that stick out because they're kind of sewn together. So I'm trying to watch where the stitches are and cut around them so that I still have that really pretty shape without anything fraying. And I do go back over the other side and correct that side too. Now I'm gonna make a bow. Of course, I'm making a bow. With that same beautiful peach and gold. It's just a regular little awareness sign bow. Very simple. And it looks like a layered bow because of the two different textures that are on this one piece. I'm gonna give it a couple of knots in the back and then trim off. I just used a little bit of jute. It really kind of blends in because the, the ribbon there is very busy, but you can use whatever you like to close it. I've got this beautiful rhinestone from some fake jewelry, and I'm gonna add it in the center of the bow. Now look at that richness. All right, so Dollar Tree sells these little sheets of pearl looking stickers. I'm just cutting out the sections that I need and I will need a section and a half. You can peel the backing off just like that and then start laying that down. I'm gonna go right over the top, right trying to center it in the peach section. So in that little colored section so that you can still see it. This, these little pearls, the little tape in the back is transparent so you can still see the color underneath. It really just looks like a row of beads on there. You don't even notice the back. Then I'll cut another little section because it wasn't long enough to go all the way around and then trim that off once I get back to the handle. Nice and neatly. This is it so far. Feel free to stop whenever you wanna stop. But you know me. I pull the tops off of some of those ferns. They almost have like a little tree seed pod looking thing on the top. I thought they would be perfect trees to add to the stage. So we have our natural trees on there and we're gonna add some of these golden trees. I've got some little pearl beads. Do not know where they came from, but you certainly can get those at Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna add a little hot glue and then go into both of these trees. If you don't use glue, they will pop straight out. That's how it will look on the one tree. And then I have some of these that I got from the thrift store. They're tiny stars, but they don't have, I don't think these have holes. No, they don't. So they're not beads, but there's just some type of an embellishment. But again, the color is perfect. It matches perfectly with the other gold that we have going on here. And I'm not a big gold girl, but this aged gold, I am loving this. It's something so warm about it. Isn't that sweet? our little angelic choir. If you love these ladies as much as I do, please give me a thumbs up. It tells YouTube that my videos are quality and that you're enjoying it so I can give you more material. Next is our Victorian ornament. Okay, so here is a pink ornament or a mauve, whatever you wanna call it. We can use any type of sticker ribbon you can use adhesive pearl wrap. 
I've got some of that gold greenery. Here are some more of these pieces that I have. And these are just random things I pick up at, at Goodwill when I see it. I thought any of these would be pretty. Here is some beautiful purple and gold. Some more of that ribbon. We're going to start by taking the top off and it just pops right off. I'm going to choose a couple more ribbons that will coordinate. Using that same gold, I'm going to go over the top and just do the same thing that we did on the bottom of the bells. And then once it is completely done, I only put one coat on here. It seems to have taken the paint pretty well. I'll set it aside to dry. And then we're going to do a quick little measurement around the ball to see how long we need our ribbons to be. Just going to go all the way around. I'm going to leave about half an inch extra over like that so we know how much we need. And now that will be our guide to cut the rest of our ribbons. I'm going to do two of each one and two of this cord, this gold cord that I have. Now I'm just looking to see which one I would like to lay down first and I think that the pink and white here would be good. This is not old ribbon. This one I think I got on clearance at Walmart um, after the spring or summertime. But I think that it is appropriate for this because the colors match very closely and the gold is just pretty. It's just pretty on there. And it gives a little bit of something extra. It's got that um, the leafy look. So going all the way around, we're going to please protect your fingers for this because you're using, you're going to be touching this a lot. So protect yourself. So we've gone around the center now. Now we're going to just go across the other way, like dividing this into sections. Then you can add tiny amounts of glue here and there. Especially when you cross over another piece of ribbon, that's a good place to put more glue. But you can certainly put it on the ball. Just be careful that you don't make a mess. I'm not sure if the paint would peel off if you had an accidental boo-boo with the glue here. I'm not sure how that would work. So just be on the safe side. Try to use as little glue as possible and make sure that you're looking before you do it. You see, I'm looking right between the center of these two white ribbons and I know that's where this beautiful um, lavender, mauve, rose gold color will go. Right across the center section in the middle. I want to keep these sections as symmetrical as possible and as neat as I can make it. This ornament was fun to do. This ornament could make me do Victorian Christmas in my home. And you know me, I'm rustic, traditional, used to do the farmhouse thing, um, definitely love the outdoors type woodland stuff, but there's something so precious about this. I hope that this ornament can find its way to a good home because this thing took a lot of work, but it was worth it. And I've sped it up for you, but I didn't want to cut all this out because I feel like sometimes when we're doing something that takes a lot of time, we start questioning ourselves saying, oh my gosh, what, am I doing this wrong? Am I putting this in the wrong spot? Am I, what, how did she say to do it? So I'm leaving it in here so that you can see it. You see, I'm dividing each section that is made by another section. So now we've got the gold on here and you notice the gold is a different texture. The gold is not old either. I'm not even sure where I got it, probably thrifting because I very rarely ever buy anything unless it's on clearance or if I thrift it or get it at Dollar Tree, of course. And you might could find something like this at Dollar Tree. Heck, I might have got it from Dollar Tree. They have a ton of ribbon right now at Dollar Tree, at least in my Dollar Trees in Alabama. Lots and lots of ribbon and trim. You just got to be careful and don't get too excited about it because the quality is not there for all of it. So after I've got all the ribbons down, I'm going to add my cording to this. All the way around, cross over. 
At this point, if you wanted to add a tassel on the bottom, you probably could do that. But I wanted to keep my ornament busy in a different way. And you'll see what I do. So far, this is how it looks. You could always pop that top back on with some hot glue and be done. But I'm not done. I've got some of this beautiful tinsely-like sparkly ribbon and it looks really good, although you can't tell right now, but bear with me, it's gonna get better in just a minute. It's trying to focus on the ornament instead of what I'm doing down there. I'm gonna flip that purple ribbon over, add some glue to it, flip that other tinsely looking ribbon right over the top of it. This was just a random piece that I got from the thrift store. Continue all along until you got one piece that looks like one ribbon. That looks like it was made this way. It's very pretty. Look at this. Look how that turned out. Doesn't that look like one beautiful, expensive ribbon? It's going to wrap around the center of the ornament. So what you want to do is start getting an idea of where the center is going to be. Kind of hold it in place. Put some glue on one of the ribbon sections. Doesn't matter which one. Then you're going to overlap that right back onto itself. So you're going to press that down there. And it is kind of fuzzy and crazy right now, but I'll clean it up. Don't worry. And so this is what it looks like around the center. Go ahead at this time and add a little more glue here and there so that this belt that goes around it or this section does not slide up and down your ornament. We don't want this to look cheap. We want this to look like we took the time that we actually took to do it. I'm gonna trim off any little fuzzies and extras that might be in the way. And we're gonna start working on this side. So we're gonna cover this up with a little, I don't know if this is like a little crocheted piece. I, I don't know, I don't know about needlework or that type of thing. So feel free to tell me what this is if this is not crochet, if it's knitted. Um, but these pieces came from the thrift store and I knew I wanted to use them in a project. So before anybody gets mad at me, it would have been in the landfill. And look how beautiful it is now, given new life. Just keep adding that glue. So we're layering, overlapping. Clean up your glue strings. I've chosen this little clip-on earring to go in the center of this doily, which the center of it is actually like a flower. I could have pressed it out, ironed it out, but I just pushed it out a little bit with my hands before I added the glue and then nestled that little jewel cluster right in the center. Now, glam is not my thing. I've never really done glam, but um, yeah, this Victorian is probably as close as I'm going to get to the glam. I'm going to add another piece of that gold ribbon there, add some glue, and overlap it on there so you have a nice, neat ring. Then I'm going to, once it cools, I'm going to feed it back through where it hangs to make a nice, neat top. I'm going to add a swag, of course, to this very regal ornament. Just putting two pieces together so they're going in opposite directions from each other, then hot glue it down. And I noticed a little gap here. I cut a little too much off, so I'm just gonna add some back in. Well, that's, that's how I like it. Going to the other side, we're going to add another little swag piece, or just one piece I used on the back. You want it to look good from both sides because it's round and it may turn when you put it on your tree. And you don't want anything nasty on the back. So to make some more of those awareness bows, we're just gonna fold it and scrunch it down. And then I'm gonna use a clip to hold it in place while we do the rest of the layers. I'm gonna now use the beautiful, it's like a satiny, no, it's not satin, Ofray. Ofray? Hmm. I'm gonna layer that on top and then some more. This is just a little bit more of that little crazy piece of ribbon. I really don't know what this stuff is, but it's it looks really good though. Well, in my opinion, it does. I'm not bragging. I hope when y'all hear me say something looks good, it's not me bragging. I try to give God the glory for my skills and my gifts because, you know, that's where it comes from. So being proud of it and, and making something and seeing it come out of my head as it comes, you know, come out of my hands as it does in my head, it, it gives me a sense of pride. Um, and not a boastful way, but you know what I mean. 
I just really love it, and sometimes things come out better than I, I think that it would come out, I guess. I don't know. You know what I mean. You know, if you're a crafter, you know what I'm saying here. There's no vanity in it, in other words. So after the bows are together and tied together, we're going to dovetail my, our ends or cut them at a slant. And then taking some clear school glue, I'm going to go over those, um, that little rope section and just twist it, twist the stick around it in the same direction. You can see what I'm doing here. So that the fabric doesn't come unglued and then let it dry. You could do it with hot glue too, but hot glue tends to dry white. And I don't want to see that. That doesn't look very nice. I'm going to put this bow on the ribbon section. So on the hanger, it's up a little bit from the ornament, which extends the length of the ornament. And I think it gives it a really pretty, pretty look. Look at that. Can you see these in, oh, on your tree? Oh my goodness, beautiful. Here are our ornaments and our decorations. So, there were three. This is our angelic choir, possibly my favorite. Not entirely sure because I like all of these. And I really hope that y'all do. I had so many requests to do Victorian inspired Christmas, um, Victorian decorations, and this is what I came up with. This is my interpretation. If you liked it, if you share it, that will help the channel tremendously. And I appreciate it forever. Here's the beautiful wreath with our doubled up poinsettias that we did. Very pretty. If you don't like the pink and gold, what colors would you use? Our magic word is going to be bells. That's right, bells. Be sure that you put bells in the comment section of this video. For a chance to win a prize, we're going to be giving away a bunch of goodies. So be sure that you hit the bell under the subscribe so that you don't miss your opportunity to win a prize. I appreciate you guys so much. We have hit 3,000, 30,000 subscribers, excuse me. And I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you so very much for stopping by. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.